Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Realizing that I have things kind of all over the place here. Welcome, welcome. Hi, I'm Mandy Rice of the Sustainable Teacher Podcast and teachonamission.com. And I am here to help teachers build sustainable classrooms so they get to stay there longer or at least as long as they would like to, right? Without sacrificing their evenings and weekends while maintaining their effectiveness and rigor in the classroom. That's what we're all about. So welcome to this rescheduled, maybe you don't know that, but it is a rescheduled Facebook Live training all about and part of our flipped classroom series. Um, And tonight we're gonna be talking about the first three steps to get started. Um, If you haven't yet, episode 17 on the Sustainable Teacher Podcast was live almost a week ago, last Tuesday. And this is kind of a recap of that. Okay, so if you didn't get to listen to that one, you are in the right place. Um, But if you have listened to it, don't worry. There may be a couple of nuggets here that you may want to jot down or put in your pocket for later. Um, And then I have an opportunity for you at the end that I'm really excited to get started with and to invite you to. Okay, Um, if you don't mind, hop in the comments. I'm just looking at my computer here to see my notes and your comments. Um, Let us know where you are and what you teach. And I love to know where you are in your flipping journey, which may even be what's flipping. (laughs) What in the world is flipping? Or why in the world would I flip considering all things like earth since March of 2020, (laughs) right? So hop in the comments, let me know any of those things. And I would love love to get to know you and, and, and chat with you a bit. Okay, um, and while you do that, I'm going to get right into it and share share my slides here. Here we go. Okay, good. I'm gonna scoot over, get in the center of that bubble. <laughs> um, okay, so the three steps to flipping your classroom. Um, in any of these lives, if you were here, it would be the week before last because last week we're on spring break. Um, you might want to jot down some notes or you might just want to sit and get, and that's great too. Wherever you are on that like spectrum, you do you boo. Um, And please let me know if you have any questions. I am certainly, certainly here to help. Okay. Um, Let me check on something here really quickly. I think, um, oh shoot. I'm going to have to bring it up on my phone. Give me just a second. I should have had my iPad ready to go with my notes because I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. But I'm fairly certain it's sitting on the couch from when my kids were using it earlier today. We are a one tablet family. Okay, um, here we go. I'm getting there, guys. Yes. Okay, so like I said, we're going to walk through the first three steps to start flipping your classroom. And here's why. <laughs> like, why would we talk about this, right? And I've actually had some teachers have a little hesitancy around um, even flipping in general just because they think that we should go back to what was normal pre-COVID. Um, and I have lots of things to say about that. Um, but I think if you stick around, you'll kind of hear um, my thoughts around that and how I think this is our opportunity to not to go back to what was in the good ways in the good ways, right? Um, Okay, so here's why this topic is so important. Let me know if this sounds familiar to you. Um, I've spoken with countless teachers, one of which I was actually on a call with today. Shout out to Carrie. Um, And it's been about how they've seen someone implement the flipped classroom and it went all wrong in all the ways. Like it totally flopped. Their flip flopped, (laughs) right? They've been intrigued by the idea, but they don't want to go about it wrong because that would be a ton of wasted time. Because let's face it, flipping your classroom is, um, although it's not necessarily more work if we're comparing apples to apples, it's definitely different work. It's work up front. Um, And I actually have a podcast episode coming out about that soon. I don't have the titles in front of me right now. Next episode is tomorrow. I think it's next week's. Isn't flipping just more work? So we talk about that. Um, And I get kind of candid about it as well. Hey, Lynn. Welcome. Welcome. Algebra 1 from Richmond, Virginia. Awesome. My sister lives in Virginia. Um, Okay, so they've been intrigued by the idea, but they've seen it go wrong. And so they don't want to spend all that time putting in the work, making it, implementing it for it to just go wrong. 
So they're hesitant, making sure that they take the first steps, that they get started on the right track. And the question being, well, how how do I start? How in the world? Where? What? How? <laughs> right? Okay. So today I'm going to go over the first three steps and then let you know where you can learn about the last two steps to get started in flipping your classroom um, so that you're doing so you're, like I said, you're getting off on the right foot, heading in the right, in the right directions. Okay. Before I get to step number one here, I have to say just one thing. No one is saying to start flipping your classroom right now. I am not saying that. I am not saying start flipping your classroom today or tomorrow or this week or this month. I'm, I'm actually not saying that. Um, I would actually argue to not make any major changes and probably make very few small changes this time of year because this time of year is when we start burning out and getting ready for summer. Like, I just need a real break, like an everyone break, right? <laughs> um, but it's also where our kids start getting fatigued. Um, so making any kind of big changes like that is going to be overwhelming for them and it's probably just going to flop. But again, you do you. Um, instead, what I would say or what I would recommend, if that means anything to you, is that you should do some listening on these weekly Facebook Lives, the training sessions that we have, maybe on the podcast about flipping, and plan to make this type of change over the summer. That way you can be really intentional with your time and make sure you get to reap those benefits that you know are possible with flipping. You wouldn't be here if you didn't know about the possible benefits of flipping. Um, and you can really get those benefits when it's all said and done. Okay. Hi, Trisha. Welcome. Teaching science and social studies in Bradford, Illinois. Awesome. That's awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Here we go. Step number one is to know without a shadow of a doubt if you're in it. <laughs> and what I mean by that is to know, is the flipped classroom the right fit for you? Let me grab something here really quickly and I keep doing that to my chair is to know, is the flipped classroom the right fit for you? Because here's the thing. There is no silver bullet in education, meaning there is no one size fits all going to solve all problems and issues in any and all classrooms. No, because not all classrooms are the same. Not all teachers are the same. Not all students are the same. You have a uniquely you teaching style and personality. Your students are unique and all of that put together into what is your classroom environment and atmosphere is unique. So you need to make that call and no one can make it for you. And I want to help you make that decision, right? Because how do you know unless you know a good deal about flipping? Um, and so I want to show you um, a, a snippet of it. Actually, I might get back to hang tight for just a second. Um, let me get back to full screen here. Yeah. Okay, so this is a free resource that I want you to take, um, the Flip Classroom Starter Kit that I've personally made, right? Made by yours truly. You can grab it right now, teachonamission.com slash starter kit. And on what is page five, really what is page six, I start talking about is flipping a good fit, okay? And again, I also talk about this in last week's podcast episode. So lots of resources out there, totally at your disposal, um, that I would love for you to get a hold of and really start thinking about, is this a good fit for you? And inside of the starter kit um, on page, wait for it, starting on page nine is the good fit qu like questions. I was going to call it quiz but that means there's a right and wrong answer and that's really not what it is. So it's just some questions kind of like in a 17 magazine. I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. <laughs> like a magazine back in the day and you would take those like, I don't know, what's the car you should get based on your horoscope quiz or, you know, who's your celebrity husband or wife? You know, those goofy quizzes. It's kind of like that. Maybe not as fun but much more practical, <laughs> much more practical. And then it's just um, what your score means down at the bottom with some recommendations. Um, and I even say that, look, you have some obstacles and flipping if you're kind of on the lower end, but that doesn't mean you have to write it off just yet. Um, and so I kind of walk you through some recommendations then, okay? So a big thing that normally 
um, people will write off as no, flipping is not right for me, is if their students don't have what I would call ideal access. I have a podcast coming out about that too. Man. <laughs> um, and so what I argue is that if your students don't have the ideal access to a Wi-Fi and devices, right? It would be really easy to say, well, nope, then I'm just not flipping. And some would argue it would be more equitable to not flip. My argument would be that it's not that it would be inequitable to flip. It would not be equitable if you flipped and didn't help them whatsoever, right? You can have expectations of your students. You can set the standard that's reasonable challenging but obtainable for your students as long as you do the big word that we learned about from like day one in college you scaffold it right you scaffold not just the lessons and the the learning of standards and mastering your course but also the opportunities in front of them you have to scaffold opportunities for them right and a lot of teachers are going to say hey emily welcome um are going to say well then that's just more work for me it could be, it absolutely could be, but it doesn't always have to be. Um, and inside my course flip classroom formula, and you'll hear me talk about this on the podcast as well, which again, you can go and listen to anytime you want. Um, we talk about ways to really know what kind of access your students have. Just because a student says, nope, I don't have a computer at home or nope, I don't have Wi-Fi at home, doesn't mean that they can't watch your videos because they might have a PlayStation they might have a functioning computer, they just don't have Wi-Fi. They may have a DVD player. No computer, no internet, but they may have a DVD player. They may have a TV that's not smart, but it has a USB port, right? There's so much technology now that is a bit more accessible than I think we know or understand. And no, all of the list of things that I could come up with of a way to get our flipped classroom to our students outside of the four walls of our room is not going to cover every single student on earth. No, it's not. Um, but I don't want us to just say, mm, nope, it's not going to work for me. Mm -mm. Um, I think that there's, there's more that we can do there. Um, hey, Catherine, Family Consumer Science in Texas. Ooh, awesome. I love that course in high school. I, I don't even know if that's still offered around me, which makes me sad. It really does. Um, okay, so the first step, number one step, and let me get back to my slides here, is to know if flipping is right for you. I could spend an entire hour talking about just that one topic. Um, so that's why I want you to go and listen to last week's podcast, and I want you to grab the Flip Classroom Starter Kit to do the, the good fit questions inside of there so that you can take some time to really know if that's the case. If you have a hesitancy right now where you're thinking, mm, I just don't think my flip, like I don't think my classroom would fit with flipping because of blank. I want you to put it in the comments right now and I want to help you work through it right now. Just do it right now. If you have a specific concern about um, flipping and your students and it not working for your, your unique situation. Okay, so that's step number one. Um, the last thing I'll say about this too is that if you are considering this and you're saying to yourself, I need to know that this is a good fit for me, you are absolutely where you should be because you're making sure that it's going to work. If you don't do that, you're doing yourself, most importantly, as well as your students, a huge disservice. So yes, you should absolutely, absolutely be asking this question. Okay, step number two is, <laughs> here we go, your flipped videos, right? This is what probably takes up most of our brain space when we're thinking or when we hear the idea or the term flip classroom, right? Excuse me as I take a drink. I didn't even ask if you guys can hear me okay because my mic is like way over here. <laughs> I'm assuming you can hear me because I can see the little dial there. Okay. Okay, so your flipped videos, like I was saying, this is like what takes up most of our brain space when we're thinking like basics of what is a flipped classroom, right? So what are we talking about here? When you start flipping your classroom, step number one is not, as we just went over what step number one is, it is not hitting record. 
that's probably one of the biggest takeaways if I could have you write down or remember one thing <laughs> about this training is that when you go to flip your classroom, step number one is not hitting record. Oh my word, it's not. Uh, I would say that that's probably one of the, the quickest ways to A, burn out, and B, make sure that um, <laughs> you don't finish <laughs> or it's not um, implemented well and that you don't get to reap the benefits um, in the end, right? So you want to make some decisions about your flipped videos. Now, there are a ton and I could talk for hours about those and I actually do inside of my online course, but I do wanna give you some snippets here. One big one, one big decision that you're gonna wanna make about your flip videos is how you'll flip each course. Now, here's the thing. In my online course and with teachers that I've worked with and helping them flip their classrooms, pre-COVID, I said, only flip one. So let's say you're a teacher, I'm social studies, so those are the courses I just know. Or let's say you're math, right? And you teach algebra one and geometry and calculus, right? You got the full gamut. A lot of teachers will come to me or take my course and they'll want to do all of them. I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, oh, thank you, Catherine. Video audio is fine. Great. Thank you. Um, and I see Lynn and Catherine, your comments. I'm going to get to those in just a second. Um, and then I lost my chance. Oh, don't flip all three. Do just one. And then COVID happened. Whew. And we need to make our classrooms accessible. And I'm gonna, I've been talking quite a bit about that on my podcast as well, about how there really is no going back to what was normal 100%. I believe that we very much are moving and things are shifting in education where our students have more choice. And as much as that pains me for teacher jobs um, and what that could look like long-term, um, I'm actually excited about how it's going to be raising the bar for our kids, not raising the bar for the standards they obtain, but in getting education to them in ways that are accessible to them, are flexible for them, and are engaging for them. And I think that if we really listen to society and um, what teachers have been really preaching <laughs> for years is that we want more applicable stuff to be teaching our kids. We don't just want to stuff down their throats what a bunch of guys in ties at the Capitol building say is required, right? Okay, that was kind of a sidebar. Anywho, lots of decisions to make about your course. Now that we need to have our courses more accessible, if you're thinking about, okay, I want to flip my classroom and I want to do that for next school year, you want to make some decisions on the one course if you teach multiple or one subject if you're elementary or lower middle, the one subject that you're going to flip, but then what you're going to do with the other ones. So I'm sure you've heard of Khan, Khan Academy. Don't know if you like those videos or want to use them. It's not the number one thing that I would recommend when flipping, but it's definitely a resource when you've got three plus subjects or courses to flip, right? Um, reaching out and collaborating with other teachers in your building, on your team, if you're lucky enough to collaborate and team teach, um, meaning with teachers who teach the same course that you do, and working in those ways, finding teachers in your uh, American History, High School, Social Studies Teachers Facebook group, right? There are so many awesome teacher groups out there, and I would guarantee that in many of those groups, you can make a post saying, I wanna flip my classroom in this subject, but I can't make all of the videos, or I'm making my videos for this course. Is anybody out there making videos for this course that they would like me, that they would allow me to use, right? There's so many ways to go about that in sustainable ways for you. Then maybe next year, two, three years down the road, then you get to that other course that you're still teaching and flip it, right? So that's probably the, the best way to make sure that when you go to flip, that it's sustainable for you. Now, like I said, there's lots of other decisions that you have to make there. The next biggest one is when your students will watch your videos. 
And in my first live in this series on Flip Classroom training, that actually is, is available on replay on this page where you're watching it right now, but also on my YouTube channel, which I'll be sure to link in the comments. Um, the, the replay is there as well. We talked about, well, if no two flip classrooms look the same, what should mine look like? And we talk about the traditional flip, the in-class flip, station or centers flip, and a mastery flip. There are all kinds of different ways to flip your classroom. So if your students, like Lynn, I see your comment, I flip, but a lot of students don't do the homework, that there definitely needs to be some shifts there. There's got to be a response there, and that could be you do an in-class flip. Um, I have a ton of other recommendations for that as well, but um, you want to decide in step number two when it is your students are going to watch your videos. And you want to make that as consistent as possible. In my AP Psych class, it was a traditional flip. They watched videos two to three times per week as homework prior to coming to class. Excuse me. And... Um, then we had all of class time to really dive deeper, do station work, blah, blah, blah. Um, however, when I had a sick kiddo at home and needed to stay home or something came up where I was at a conference for a couple of days, you know, whenever I was out, they would just watch one of the videos in class and not have homework, right? So be as consistent as possible with one, but know you can be flexible as well. Okay. Um, let me get to these comments here really quickly. And please, guys, let me know if you have any questions. I want to I wanna chat with you for sure. Okay, Lynn, I flip, but a lot of students don't do the homework. I so totally, totally get that. And that is absolutely something that, Lynn, and everybody else listening, you want to be proactive about. And here's what I mean by that. You can't be proactive now because we're in the school year, right? And so by being proactive, I mean making some plans preferably over a break or over the summer would be the, the big preference, so that you have a plan, you have a system, a procedure in place so that you know, your brain knows exactly what to do when a student doesn't do, doesn't watch the video. And you have steps for that child to follow upon not doing the homework so that you don't even have to think about it, right? That's on them. Then there's also some other cultural, um, like classroom environment shifts to be making that I teach about in my online course, Flip Classroom Formula. Um, but a big one is this. You wanna make sure that what you're doing in class depends on, like as much as possible on students doing those notes so that when your kids are in class, they feel lost. That's a natural consequence. I'm all about natural consequences. I need to be more about natural consequences in my parenting, but some natural consequences you just can't let your children learn from, right? Like it's just too dangerous. <laughs> okay, I'm getting off on a tangent there, but um, you want to let them feel that awkwardness a bit. Um, that really is a huge way to get them get them on board. Um, and I have lots of other recommendations there, but Lynn, I hope that that what I shared there was was a bit helpful. All right, Catherine, video, audio. Oh, sorry. My kids, on the other hand, need a mute button so that they can mute themselves. I'm confused. Oh, like your children that you're around right now as you're watching. I think I get it, Catherine. <laughs> okay, Catherine said, I tried flipping my culinary class four years ago so that we could cook every day. The fun part, absolutely. Um, but I got major pushback from my students. Okay. And since my class, yep, wasn't a course subject, they would not do the work at home. Maybe next year a flip classroom will work now that they are used to online learning. Catherine, I get that. Um, meaning I get, and I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I do get where your students are coming from. And I, I say that from a place of knowing high school students, having taught them for 10 years. Um, I get that, right? Like, hey, this is not a core subject. Um, I am taking AP Stats and AP Psych and AP, AP Push and AP Bio, you know, all the things. Not that they have to take all AP classes to have homework, but any classes at the high school level, they're more rigorous. And probably at least half, if not all of them, are going to have to some degree homework. And I would say, Catherine, too, that... Um, and I'm not trying to burst your bubble here, just trying to be real and um, as much of a teacher friend as possible here by being honest. I think that um, 
if you were to push back then from their pushback and say, no, we have homework, you may even see your numbers drop. Because I think that that is part of like, like I taught sociology. And if I assign homework, I notice then the next year that those numbers went drastically down. Um, because kids really do rely on those courses to be engaging, to be fun without a ton of the rigor or um, workload. And that, and, and so we have to decide, can my course be engaging and a, an authentic and valuable learning experience without it being a huge workload? So yes, they were AP students and athletes. Absolutely, right? So I would recommend for you, Catherine, an in-class flip. Here's the benefit to an in-class flip. You might think that, you know, well, I took 45 minutes. Let's just say that that's how long your bell is to do a lecture on XYZ. They're just gonna then watch my lecture that's 45 minutes all bell? Like I should just then teach it. No, actually, because what you're going to do is take what was, what did take you 45 minutes to, let's just say lecture, right? To put it in one word, to deliver the content. But in that 45 minutes, you have a lot of student questions. You have a lot of pausing to allow students to catch up. Um, you have a lot of clarifying and answering, like I said, answering questions. Take all of that out and fine tune your delivery. I know you can get what was a 45 minute lecture down to 15 minutes. I know you can, I know you can. And that seems like a lot and, and you won't have to rush it either. I, I swear you're not gonna have to get in the video and just like, puke on the video like like word vomit no you don't have to do that um, there are ways to make those super concise but super effective videos that will only be about 10 to 15 minute videos that will take your students about twice as long to watch but it still allows them to go at their own pace and saves you some time right because now you're not delivering the same song and dance every single bell in school right? Like you're the most overpaid repeat, like repeat song there is on earth, <laughs> right? Um, oh, I'm so glad you agree, Lynn. Um, and so I think work out the, I don't want to say kinks because you haven't tried it yet and there doesn't have to be kinks right from the start, but work out what that's going to look like before you even start. And I think you and your students would love it. Absolutely. So let me know, Catherine, if you have any questions about that. All right, back to our slides here. Step number three, get your toolbox ready. I meant to have a slide here with the tools that I recommend, um, but I ran out of time. <laughs> I had to put the kids to bed and then ran out of time for this. Um, okay, in last week's podcast episode, I go through these, but I want to talk about a couple of them here and why. Um, and how um, I don't just want to say go find um, a resource on the internet, on the cloud that allows you to record videos. I would argue to not do that. <laughs> Here's my biggest recommendation for your number one tool in your flipped classroom toolbox. Get a screen recording software that you can download onto your device couple of reasons why. I don't know about you, but you maybe tried to make a video on something like Screencast-O-Matic or Screencastify back in March, April, May of 2020, as was everyone else and their brother. And relying on the cloud to record a video nowadays in the post-COVID world that we are living in is not a safe bet. Because a lot of times you're going to be making these videos in response to your students or just staying one week ahead of them and you need it to work now, right? I, I don't know about you, but I feel like every tool that I use in my classroom, I need it to work now. Otherwise, it's, it's out. It's gone because that's the pace we work at, right? Get a software that is not cloud-based that you can screen record and, and here's my next recommendation, edit. You absolutely want to be able to edit. And no, it's not going to add more time. It's going to save time. Here's why. If you're able to edit, you don't have to then restart or fumble or have 
videos that you hate because your dog barked or the bell rang if you're recording at school or your child had to tell you a story and you had to be a bad mom for a hot second by just ignoring them. (laughs) Been there, done that. Um, So absolutely edit. And I forgot about something. Don't get something that's cloud-based. Because what about when you're at your kid's soccer practice and you want to make a video real quick in the car (laughs) and you don't have internet, right? I don't know about you, but not everybody has an amazing hotspot, right? Um, Or what about when the internet goes out and I have to make a video right now, right? There's just some things that you don't want to rely on the internet for and making a video, in my opinion, is one of them, okay? Um, All right. Now, I am at my like cutoff because I want to make sure that I don't take up too much of your time. Um, The next tool that I recommend, I'm not going to tell you about right now because if I do, I'm going to go on a long tangent and take forever. So please, please, please go and check it out in the Flip Classroom Starter Kit, um, which I have right here. Teachonamission.com slash starter kit, and I'll put it in the comments here in just a second. Um, And as well as the most recent episode on the sustainable teacher podcast at the time that this video is airing um episode 17 is what that's called the number one tool you need for your classroom um so i talk about the first three steps of flipping with the starter kit here and here is the opportunity that i'm really excited to share with you about are you ready are you ready here we go I have, well, it is open now. It's not starting though. It's starting one week from today on April 12th, 2021. The Flipped Teacher 30 Day Facebook group. Totally free, right? Like it's it's not a paid thing. It's a 30 day group. So on May 11th, which would be April 12th to May 11th, right? 30 days. May 11th is the last day of the group. After that, it goes away. But for 30 days, I'll be in the group with live trainings about the flip classroom, similar to what you see here, but even more in depth. I'll be going live for um, a Q&A session to make sure I get all of your questions answered. Um, and every single week, we are doing a flipped classroom essentials giveaway. Oh, so as you see on the screen here, um, off to the right hand side, I'll be giving away a blue Yeti USB mic, which is actually what I am using right now, but it's like a foot and a half away from my face and you guys can still hear me. Okay. And that's just because the, um, adjustments on it are really tight right now. I didn't loosen them in order to like bring it over here to me. Sorry. You probably heard that. Whoop. Can you guys still hear me? I think you can. Can you hear me? Hopefully you can. Oh, you know what? I'm not on that microphone. I forgot. Let me see if it's here. All right, let me try this. Hello? Okay, let me, um, I'm going to try and bring it over so that you guys can see it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, here we go. Bam, this is what it looks like. Now, I have like one of the fancy arm things, and I'll show you on the the bigger view here in a second. But this is the, the Yeti, um, the blue Yeti USB mic. I absolutely love this bad boy. Um, do you need a microphone like that to flip your classroom? No, but do I want to give you one for free? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, the Hue HD Pro document camera. Here it is. I have it right here. Are you ready? Bam. They gave me one and I'm going to give it to you. And, um, the web camera that's not being here, but will be here in just a second, as well as I'm forgetting what it was. Oh yeah. Camtasia, which is the number one tool that I recommend for your flipped classroom. Um, and I want to get you that link. So give me just a hot second here. I'm going to grab it for you. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. One second. Bam, 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 bam. All right. That link will take you hopefully logged into Facebook and doesn't force you to log in. Cause who likes to do that? Right? <laughs> Hold on one second. Um, I want to go here get back to full screen. There we go. Okay. Um, hopefully it takes you straight to the group. Um, and you'll request to join. I haven't approved anybody to get in yet, but I will be approving everybody to get in here shortly, probably starting tomorrow and every week. So that's four total giveaways. I'll be giving away one of those that you just saw on the screen. So I'll be giving away one of these. I'll be giving away one of these that you can see me on right now, a Logitech HD 1080p USB, whoa, say that 10 times fast, web camera. (laughs) 
a Hue HD Pro document camera and one license to Camtasia valued at like a lot of money, like $250, something crazy. So get in that group <laughs> fast. Okay. Um, all right, guys, if you have any questions like ever, please feel free to post them in the comments here. Um, shoot me a DM, shoot me an email, let me know. I want to help you to, and I really do see it this way. I was going to say brace yourself, but that seems kind of passive and that's not what I want you to be. I don't want you to be passive walking into what will be the new normal. I don't know what the new normal is going to look like in education. Nobody really does, but I know it's not going to be what it was. And I think we can have, to a certain degree, some control over what will be the new normal, at least in our classrooms, in ways that make us accessible and flexible for our students, but in ways that are sustainable for us. We are not martyrs. We can't be on the front line all the time when it comes to, and I'm not drawing parallels between like, nurses and doctors on the front line in COVID. That's not what I'm doing there. I just mean like the first line of defense for our schools when it comes to um, meeting our students' needs in a pandemic. It, it is our job to meet our students' needs, but let's do it in ways that also sustain us to make sure that we can be meeting students' needs for longer than a few years longer than the isn't the average lifespan of a teacher five years let's make it longer than that right and let's let's not make it to year 10 or year 15 and just essentially settle for mediocrity out of just needing to survive right and just going through the motions i don't want to be in a classroom where i just go through the motions right? I want to thrive and I want to be like, I want to wake up in the morning and be excited about what it is that I'm teaching because my students can feed off of that. But I can't do that if I'm working around the clock. I can't do that if I have to work weekends and evenings, right? So eight years so far. Yes, Catherine. Yay. That's so exciting. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thanks so much for being here, guys. Please make sure you go grab that starter kit totally yours. Um, hop into that Facebook group, totally free. See us on the podcast. I guess I would be here. Listen, listen to, <laughs> listen to me on the podcast. Um, and let me know if you have any questions ever. Um, uh, I am going live again, cause this was a, a makeup from last week. This Wednesday is our next one. And it is the number one thing I want you to know before you flip. The number one thing I want you to know before you flip. So if my message is resonating with you here to this evening, please share with your teacher friends, get them there on Wednesday and let's chat. All right. Bye guys. Everybody have a fantastic um, start back to your week and I'll see you hopefully on Wednesday. Bye for now.